honestly feel honoured and humbled uh, to be able to be here this afternoon and to be able to um, speak to you, um, and particularly so when we've heard um, some incredible stories of survival uh, and loss, the testimonies that have been shared with us today, it really, um, my words can't possibly uh, do justice really. Um, but I was really very pleased to be asked to speak today, because, for, and I haven't kind of got a very formal speech because the reason I wanted um, to join you is, is that last summer I was very fortunate to have the opportunity uh, to visit Rwanda as part of a joint delegation between the Church of England and MPs. Um, so alongside some church leaders from Nottinghamshire, including um, the Bishop, Paul Butler, who's no longer our Bishop, but has gone on to be the Bishop of Durham, but also Reverend Sarah Clark, who serves as a minister in Clifton in my constituency, um, and Poppy Richards, who's a constituent of John Mann in Bassett Law, and there was myself and John Mann and another colleague of ours uh, from North West, uh, Graham Jones. Um, and we went to look at the processes of peace and reconciliation uh, that are going on in Rwanda and also Burundi and to see what we can learn from those and how we can spread that good practice and use that information uh, to ensure that other countries uh, establish peace uh, and go on to have uh, successful uh, development. You've seen from the, the film today, from the documentaries about Rwanda, what a beautiful, uh, incredible country it is. It's called uh, Mille Colline. It's uh, the country of a thousand hills, and it's really uh, a, a, an amazing place covered in lush uh, countryside, banana plantations, mangoes, pineapples. Um, it's a beautiful place. And what's more is that it's a place of, of real hope for the future. Uh, we met very, very many Rwandans. I've travelled right from the north of the country to the south of the country, obviously starting in Kigali. Um, and everywhere that we went, we were welcomed by people uh, to their villages. There was singing, there was always food uh, on offer. People were incredibly hospitable. So um, whilst this is today is a day of remembrance and to look back and, and somewhat a sombre day, it should also be a day of, of hope. And we've heard about Rwandan youth, we've heard about uh, that, but it's also, you saw from the films, uh, of looking forward to the future um, of Rwanda rebuilding uh, in a really positive way. But it was a painful and difficult visit. Um, we started by vis visiting the Kigali uh, Memorial Centre, which was established with help from the Aegis Trust, who of course are based here in Nottinghamshire, um, at the invitation of the Rwandan government and the Kigali City Council. Um, and they'd seen the Holocaust Centre here in Laxton in Nottinghamshire and felt that they wanted the memorial uh, in Kigali to, uh, to incorporate some of, to have their help in setting up something uh, to help Rwandans uh, to be able to remember. And I was reminded what a small world it was when I was going round the memorial centre and one part of it, it talks about other uh, genocides and of course uh, the Holocaust and there was a photo there uh, of a gentleman called Stephen Mendelssohn who's from uh, Sheffield, he's a survivor of the Holocaust and I'd met Stephen uh, when we did some work together after I'd been with students from Nottingham to visit Auschwitz uh, and the students from Trinity School invited Stephen to come and address their fellow students to talk to them uh, about Holocaust and it made me feel it was a very small world even though Rwanda feels to me quite uh, a different place to many of you will feel like uh, your uh, your sort of home and heritage um, but it was interesting to kind of see that closeness that we, even though I was halfway around the world I've seen photographs of people that I knew uh, in a different context and that, as we heard at the memorial centre uh, in Kigali there's also uh, mass graves of 250,000 people who were amongst those killed during the 100 days of genocide in Rwanda. Well, that's about the same uh, as the population of the city of Nottingham. Um, and just trying to get into your head the, the scale uh, of that loss of life is truly, um, well, it's almost impossible uh, to do. Over the coming, over the days where I spent in Rwanda, I visited um, a number of the genocide sites those of you who were in the church this morning will have heard uh, Reverend Harrison make reference to the fact that some people uh, went to churches as, pla as places uh, of safety and sanctuary during uh, the genocide. Many of you will, of course, know this because you were, uh, you were there. And one of the places we visited was the church in Ntarama, uh, where 5,000 
people were killed. It's just a tiny um, building. And we heard from Eve and his story about how he survived uh, as a young boy because uh, a woman was uh, brutally murdered with a machete and, and she fell on top of him. And Eve survived because uh, he was hidden uh, underneath her body. And I can't, I can't even begin to describe how I felt standing in that tiny church in Rwanda hearing Eve's story uh, and looking around the room that's filled with uh, the clothing of those who died but also um, some of the, uh, the bones and skulls of those who were there. Um, it was so shocking, it was so horrific. I found that when I came back to this country uh, there were things that I didn't even want to tell people about because I almost wished they weren't in my mind because they were so awful. And for those of you who actually, I mean, this was 19 years after uh, the events that I heard those stories and, and witnessed the place that they had, that some of those massacres had taken place. But for those of you who were there, who lost relatives and friends, um, I can't imagine how you could uh, begin to deal with it. But painful as remembering must be, um, and painful as it was to hear those stories, we have to do that because if we don't listen to the lessons, if we don't uh, understand what happened and think back and remember, we won't be able to learn uh, the lessons of history. And if we don't learn the lessons of history, we do, of course, go on to repeat them. And as we heard from Irina uh, earlier, um, the, this isn't the only uh, example of genocide in, uh, in the last hundred years. We have the Armenians, we had what happened in Nazi Germany, we had what happened uh, in Kosovo and Rwanda, uh, and there are others too, unfortunately. But what we must remember is that we can all play our part in preventing such atrocities from happening again. And we must all play our part in building societies where everyone is respected so that these things can't be repeated. So finally, uh, today, I'd like to say that we remember the lives lost, we show our solidarity with the survivors, but we must unite to make sure that it never happens again. So I hope that along with me, you'll renew your determination to stand up to discrimination and prejudice whenever we encounter it, to work for peace across the globe because we recognise our common humanity. And I'm really proud that Nottingham is playing its part in Quibuca 20. And I'd particularly like to thank those, particularly Amdani, I can't see him now, um, who I know has been so instrumental in making uh, this day happen. You really are an inspiration to us all. Our city is better uh, for having the diversity and in having the Rwandan community here. Um, and I thank you and I hope that we will continue to remember what happened but also to build the safe and secure societies of the future. Thank you.